Good morning, Church. Pastor Caleb here with your devotion on this Thursday. It's Thursday, and we're working through the Heidelberg Catechism. We're going through the various Lord's Day, and not using them just on the Lord's Day, but, you know, in the weekdays, too. Um, this is Lord's Day number four. If you have a copy of Heidelberg Catechism, be it either in physical form or electronically in a PDF, I invite you to go ahead and pull that out right now so you can follow along and so that later on after the video, you can go and look through the scriptural citations, which are at the bottom of every answer. So um, just a little recap. Yesterday in Lord's Day 3, uh, we, we started with kind of the history of, of sin and salvation, okay? Um, we started with uh, finding that God made us good, but sin entered our life. Um, and thus we are corrupted, we have original sin, and we cannot choose the good and righteous thing apart from the Holy Spirit. So now we are jumping into Lord's Day for three questions again today. Question, but God, but doesn't God do us an injustice by requiring in his law what we are unable to do? Answer, no, God created human beings with the ability to keep the law. They, however, provoked by the devil in willful, willful disobedience, robbed themselves and all their descendants of these gifts. Question. Does God permit such disobedience and rebellion to go unpunished? Answer. Certainly not. God is terribly angry with the sin we are born with, as well as the sins we personally commit. As a just judge, God will punish them both now and in eternity, having declared... Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the book of law. Question. But isn't God also merciful? Answer. God is certainly merciful, but also just. God's justice demands that sin committed against his supreme majesty be punished with the supreme penalty, eternal punishment of body and soul. So, lots of uplifting stuff here today. Um, let's go through this and dive in a little bit deeper. Um, so in the in the law, right, the Old Testament law, this is asking, okay, well, if we if we say that we are we are sinful unavoidably, um, but we're required to keep the law. If we're unable to keep the law, then why are we required to do it? Um, but that but this 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 answer is that look, God doesn't change. Um, you know, God's plan for us hasn't changed just because we screw up a bunch. Um, God still has this, this future for us, this existence in mind for us. And just because we're unable to do it doesn't mean that, you know, that we aren't guilty of, of, of some kind of sin for it. Um, which is, which is really interesting. And I, I love, I don't know if I love it, but I find it very, um, uh, very intriguing that the the last line indicates that um, in willful disobedience we robbed uh, themselves and their descendants of all these gifts. Now uh, I think that is at the core of understanding of, of God's law is that um, it's not like okay here's rigid rules and you got to do them because I say so. Um, these are all seen as gifts, like the way to live the life that God wanted us to live. Um, there is lots of good stuff in the Old Testament, in Old Testament law, um, namely about how to treat one another. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there that really seems pretty radical to us, um, namely in terms of like, um, you know, I, I, I think in, in today's society, we're pretty well concerned with accumulating wealth and passing it on to our progeny and just letting it build and build and build and build and build. Um, there's a lot in the Old Testament about, that says, establishes clear cut policies that, uh, kind of says we're not supposed to do that and kind of requires people to, you know, give of them, of, of their own stock of what they've grown uh, for the sake of those who don't have enough or don't have any. Um, a couple of things that spring to mind um, is that there's a commandment against uh, farmers cutting the end rows in their fields. Those are to be left for widows and orphans. And then um, there's the Jubilee, which is once every 50 years, like all debts are canceled and any property bought within that 50 years reverts to the person you bought it from. Um, just, it allows everyone to make a living for themselves. Anyway, we're getting, we're getting a little bit off track here. So then, does God permit such disobedience and rebellion to go unpunished? Uh, God, this is, no, God is terribly angry with the sin that we have committed. And, and that's a thing that, um, 
we, 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 we don't talk about a lot in Christianity because we, you know, I think there's been centuries of people harping on sin and God is angry with you. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a famous work in, I think around, it was around American colonial era Christianity, um, by a, a very influential pastor named Jonathan Edward. Uh, and he's, it's, it's entitled sinners in the hands of an angry God. You know, we don't, I think we, we I think we've kind of went too far one direction with God's wrath for a long time. And I think we're now, now we might be trying to overcorrect into just God. This is just a big, giant, loving, cuddly teddy bear that no matter what we do, God's always going to be happy with us. Well, God's always going to love us. God's always going to be there for us. God's always going to be there to pick us up and bring us back on the right path. But that doesn't mean that God isn't angry with the stuff we do, um, that we that we sin against God and we sin against each other. Um, God doesn't like a lot of the stuff that, you know, goes on down here on earth. Um, and that is part of God's justice. Uh, God doesn't want us to treat one another badly, take advantage of one another, kill one another, uh, mistreat one another, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, uh, you know, God is still angry about the sins that we do. Um, but God, is, is, isn't God merciful? Yes, of course God is merciful, but there is still this demand of, of justice by those um, that, that sin committed against, supreme, against his supreme majesty be punished with the supreme penalty, eternal punishment of body and soul. We're going to get more into that later on, um, but basically it's, 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 the catechism is stating right there, uh, listen, there is a place of punishment. There is punishment uh, destined for those that do not uh, follow Christ, that do not seek uh, the righteousness and holiness that God, uh, that God uh, provides, that God offers, um, that, yes, very much, there are consequences for evil. So with that very uplifting thought, um, we're going to wrap up for today, and uh, we're going to uh, go and endeavor to live righteous lives this day. Again, uh, if you haven't downloaded that PDF, or if you're not looking it up on your browser on your computer, um, go ahead and do that. There's there's your scriptural references in there that shows you where uh, and how these these folks, the, the authors of the catechism, arrived with these answers. And you can also follow along with me uh, in these subsequent videos from Heidelberg. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that though we are unable to follow your law, your commandments, your precepts ourselves, that you give us Jesus Christ so that we need not fear damnation, that we need not be too hard on ourselves, but that we instead just seek Christ's face, that we seek the love of Jesus Christ so that we can know you and be living the life that you've given us to lead. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks a lot, folks, for tuning in. I hope you are finding this series from the Heidelberg Catechism strengthening in your faith. Hopefully it's making you think about stuff that you might not have thought about before. Make sure to wear your mask out in public to keep you and others safe, and I'll see you tomorrow.